It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show with Jay Hall and DJ Academics. All I'm offering is the truth. Nothing more. Let's get it. Jim? What up, though? Hip Hop Matrix Show. Myself, Jay Hall. This guy right here, DJ Academics. What's up with you, brother? I can't complain. How about yourself? Uh, I could do it. I'm complaining. I want to renew my license. My, I mean, not my license, but my tags. Uh oh! Every ticket you ever had, man. In the world. <laughs> Yo, it was a Sally Mae payment pay on there? All the oh, Sally Mae on your tags? Oh, damn! I'm just no. I'm talking about the far as the payment was about the size of that. It was just oh, oh okay. I was about to say that don't make sense. Nah, man. It was, I didn't even know I had these two tickets. Well, actually, I think I I fought them, but I might have lost. But they didn't tell me I lost. Oh yeah, they let you run around for a couple years, and then as soon as you go to renew them tags, bow. Dude, I had to hit the I, everything. I, everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah, man. So I had to. I, I got to park my car right now because really I, I just can't. I can't. Af- I can't afford right now. Can't afford that right now, because it, it was. It was. It was bad. It was bad. I got hit with one. Ooh, I was like, my God, where'd that come from? Yeah, I, I couldn't do it. But it's you know, but it's okay though. Nobody cares, so there's no need to complain. But it, it, it still hurt me. It still hurt me. How you been? How your week? Yeah, I can't complain, man. Just working, staying busy, man. Progressing. Progressing. Yes, sir. You get the most Russell Simmons, Def Comedy Jam, Vegas answers. <laughs> We see you living good on IG, brother. It's okay. How the house come along? Uh, it's, it's it's coming. <laughs> it's coming along. Coming along. Still doing some. You got the workout room, all right? It ain't it ain't quite there yet. I'm almost there. Almost there. What, keep what, keep what in the, shape so I don't gotta I don't gotta rip and run. You know, Planet Fitness they they like to get you once a year with them forty dollar fees. <laughs> and, and YMCA is a, a pretty penny too. So so you now you building your own gym in your own home. Yep. How's it coming along? Coming along good. I just need the treadmill, and I'm just about done. What you got so far? You showed me the dumbbells, which look space age and futuristic. Uh, I mean, I got the whole thing. I got the gym set. I got the the bench, the squat machine, um, the all in one little squat thing, and bench and deadlift and all that stuff. And yeah, ab rollers. And I, I mean, I can run outside and do my own makeup. I can do a full body workout. I put it that way. That's what's up. I, I gotta come check that out, bro. Yeah. I definitely gotta come check that out, man. Yeah, get a real workout, man. Hey, how you, hey, you yeah. leave and sore. See if see what you really about in that gym. Who me? Yes, you. See what you about in that we gym. We worked life. out well, I've worked no, you we out. The gym at the station, right? No. We never? We never worked out together. Well, I just came in, you were already working out. Probably. Is that what it is? I'm like, I've been in the gym with you. No, but you ain't never shot in the gym with me. Okay. I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, you want that work? I'm with it. No, you want that work. <laughs> so I'm with it. You know what I'm mean, saying? You weigh a little more, but pound for pound. Okay. Let's see what it is. Oh, we, we know all around. We run in and we working out and we crossfitting. Oh yeah, I, I do the whole thing. I start. I start with a run. Okay. I be, I believe you. I believe you. I'm not. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just want to know what we doing when we step in. <laughs> he said, "What we doing?" Just, yeah. I just want, what we doing. See, I want those people. You got to tell me what we doing. <laughs> you know, I hate when I go to like a class, like a oh, boot camp class. This too? Oh damn, we doing this? Time? Yeah. Oh, like when they want to be like, no, don't worry about. It. No, no, no. You need to tell me. See, I, I'm 30 plus now. I need to know what I'm doing. I'm yeah, not. What you getting into? Get a good night. I'm sleep. not someone. I'm not young where I can just roll out the bed. You could just throw some. Uh, uh-uh, no. I need to know what we doing so I can mentally prepare myself for this work. You know what I'm okay. saying? That's what I'm saying. It's kind of like how I am. You know, when I get with a lady. Okay, what we doing? We doing? Oh, we doing? We going there? Oh, okay. Because I can't do all that stuff like I used to. You know, time getting on me. Yeah, I usually run like half a mile to a mile before. Okay. I'm, I'm with that. I, I do. I do a nice little warm up. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Like half a mile, get the heart rate going, get a little tired, and then start lifting. It, it depends. You know, like if my gym is, a, I told you, the gym I, I'm at now is not too far from me. So I run up there as a warm up. Mm-hmm. And then I run back as a cool down. Oh, okay. But when it get cold, I'm going to have to, you know, I ain't doing that. Yeah, I'm that's gonna, why I said I need a treadmill now. Right, I'm right, really, right. Really treadmill, I do a mile. But, you know, then every other day I run. But, you know, I ain't got no problem mixing it up, though. You know, you know, as long as we get in there. Just don't be throwing no pounds on me, man, because I'm. Again, I'm not into that no more. I'm not into like trying to build up the heaviest. Now it's all about the reps. Yeah, it's about repetition. You get you get the cut. More reps get the cut. More yeah. weight, less reps gets you just big and bulky. I'm not interested in being. No, big I'm not and trying bulky. to get that. It takes I just away. Want to be solid and shredded. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's all I'm all about, man. I'm trying to you know slice up, get my jump rope game going on. I'm all, I'm all with that. You know. Yeah, we, what's your video that? I even work in, I even work out in my sauna suit. Your what suit? Sauna suit. What's a sauna suit? It's like a big trash bag. Oh, the, the, oh, oh, I never knew they was. You look like a Ninja Turtle. You look like a hobo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like Do they big, work? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like I feel, I, you know, I take them things off, look like I just got out the pool. I'd be so sweaty. Really? Yes, yes, I, yes, yes. I never knew. How much they, where can I buy that at? Like a sports uh, goods? Walmart. 
a walk. Yeah, good old Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Target, whatever one. Good old Walmart. Yeah, that's yeah. I never use one of those. I yeah, I that. use one. Yeah, they definitely work. Are they effective when it comes to your workout in general? Yeah, I mean, if you lose, if you slicing all your water weight, you slicing everything. This helps with definition. Ah, oh, that's what I need to get back. I need to get back my definition right now. I got this off season weight when I hurt my ankle, so I got this off season weight. I'm trying to shake off, but yeah, I'm getting I get there. You right, I get you right. Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there though. You know what I'm saying? I come to your house, get that on. You know what I'm saying? Eat some waffles afterwards. You know what I'm saying? We gangsters. What's up? I don't know about the waffles afterwards, but, you know, you get the point, though. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. Yeah, that's too much bread after a workout. It is. It is. It is. But it's all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got a lot we're going to talk about today. You know, welcome to Hip Hop Make the Show. It's been some things going on. When we were recording last week, we we kind of low-key missed the wave of Drake showing up on the shop. So we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit. And then, but we back in time for Pusha T's response. You know, so we definitely going to get into that and some sports. So, as usual, make sure you follow us along on our Twitter, at WHMS98. Follow me, at JHAR Radio. This guy right here, at DJ Academics. We're going to get into the show. Let's go. Yeah, let's get into some light work a little quick. Your girl, Cardi B. I don't know if you got a chance to check it out, but she might be in a TV series. She might be one of those type of rappers. I mean, that's um, we saw that coming. Fran Dresser, <laughs> who used to star in the 90s show, The Nanny, uh, I guess apparently they're working on a reboot, and there's rumors that Fran Dresser wants Cardi B to kind of like play her daughter, or she definitely wants oh, her the to nanny, be. That's right. Yeah, she definitely wants her to be um, the new nanny in the show. Yeah, yeah. You think that could work out? Yeah, that'd be fun. I mean, it'll, if you remember the nanny a little bit, it was about this lady, I guess, like from like the lower parts of New York, and she was a nanny for this upper um, rich. It's pretty much like lower class white folk. Being a nanny for a rich, higher class white folk, mm. but I guess if you throw Cardi in there, she'll be Cardi, you know, pretty much playing herself. It can probably be really easy, in that sense. You think that'll kind of like, I don't know, dampen her career a little bit? No. Nah. Or propel it? I think it's gonna propel it, and give her a second career once the music slows up. Yeah, I get a little concerned whenever I think about that because I think about Eve. And, you know, when Eve was, like, on TV, had her own show, whatever. But she wasn't Eve, like, after that. Hey, nah, Eve wasn't Eve after she met that white guy from Britain. Oh, the billionaire? Yeah, the billionaire. <laughs> Maximilian. Yeah, yeah, Maximilian, <laughs> Mr. Gumball. Like, she she said, forget Eve. Uh, that's uh, a good point. I don't even make another dollar. Like, this guy, we straight. Uh, <laughs> that's, we that's, a, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. This, this boy got cars worth more than we'll ever make in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty storybook. She kept it 100, though, because she had, like, Bun B be the, you know, the um the guy that got them married. You know, I don't want to say priest or nothing, but the... Performed at the, the reception. Yeah, performed. No, no, not the reception. He was the one who had them say the vows, you know. Oh, okay, the minister. The minister. Thank you. My brain was fried. Yeah, he was the minister. So, you know, she kept the hip-hop all day. It's just that, you know, with Cardi... You know, I don't want Cardi to fall into the whole, like, you know, you start doing your TV show, then the music kind of takes a hit. You know, I feel like people who do that, that we know that were successful, they've had, like, a couple albums out first. You know, I still want Cardi to kind of have, like, another album to kind of, like, she solidify. another album coming out. I think she's coming out first quarter. First or second quarter. Oh, you think so? Mm -hmm. What's it going to be called? Throw I, think a I shoe? heard the birdie. I think I heard the bird. Well, she got a, a new single coming out first week of November. Throw them shoes? No, it's called Money. Okay. No, no, but she got a new single coming out first week of November. I think she's coming out late first quarter, early second quarter. Well, you know, recently she said that her daughter giving birth to her is one is a joy, but her daughter broke her vagina. That's that's something I've never heard before. <laughs> she said broke her vagina, had to get stitched up. Oh, well, that's a lot of women get stitches down there. I they, hear they, they 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 dissolve and they repair. I mean, I'm sure she back to she back to throwing it around the room. Throwing yeah. it around the room. Yeah, I'm sure she's back to throwing it, throwing that thing around. Is I hear that when you see or witness, if you can bear witness to your wife, woman giving like the baby coming out, it's a hell of a humbling experience. Yeah, well, I seen see, I seen a couple C sections. I ain't see it coming out the. Well, how the was the C section? Was the C section? Did you feel a certain kind of way? Like as a father, did you feel that moment? I guess, or seeing that amazement? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. I liked it. I watched the whole thing. You say, I liked it? Like you gave it a high five? Yeah, I recorded it and everything. Really? Yeah, I got both my past two kids on my phone. 
You serious? I'm dead ass serious. Like seeing them come out the yeah, vagina and you no, just No, I said I didn't see the vagina. It was a C section. That's the stomach. So you saw it come out the stomach? Yes. Oh, okay. I mean that's still okay. And you watch it sometimes now? No. I I don't really go back and watch it, but my wife's never watched it, but I watch I've seen it, but I mean I haven't I don't go back and watch it all the time. Okay. Nothing like that, but I have it. And did you feel the difference like after was that your first visual? It was a stomach. It wasn't a vagina. But I mean, still, you're seeing like a baby come out of a human. Like, okay, but it's the same vagina afterwards. It's... I'm talking about far as seeing a living life form coming out your wife. Like, did that change you in a way? No. You just stoic, man. I I feel I'm feeling I'm getting creeped out thinking about the image of it. Like, <laughs> what would you expect to come out? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> An <laughs> alien or something like what was you maybe, expecting? Maybe, a dinosaur? Like, maybe, uh, maybe I watched too many show, um, too many like alien yeah, movies. Like, it was an alien want? marathon all last week, and when the alien popped out the stomach and oh, and turned the other way, maybe that's what I'm thinking. When you tell me C-section, then you ain't see it come out the vagina. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, ah, ah. The C-section is coming out of it's a cesarean section from the stomach. Ah, man, oh, man, I just feel a certain type of way. I, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I'll get there to that point and I'll feel differently. Grow up. Um, I'll try. I guess, I guess. I, I, I try to grow up. Speaking of growing up, did you get a chance to check out the BET Hip Hop Awards this week when they finally aired? Uh, I didn't check it out yet. Not yet? Mm-hmm. Well, let me save you a little bit. You ain't miss it. You ain't miss anything. Except for the fact that Lil Wayne did it get, he did get a I Am Hip Hop Award, which I thought was dope. But when I'm noticing about the BET Hip Hop Awards, and you ain't have to watch this last one to know, but it seems like it's getting small. The venues are getting smaller. Have you peeped that? Yeah, because it's um they want to be tight on security, and it's just not that many acts out there. Because I mean, mostly they're highlighting like, and it's not that many awards. They give out maybe three. Yeah, because you can't break down hip hop into that many awards because it's mostly just rap. So I mean, you got the group, solo, male, female, song, album. Feature, collab, and that's basically it. The sad part about it the is cypher, that. That's it. Yeah, the sad part that's about like it. really a 30 minute show. Well, <laughs> yeah. They're stretching to an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't. Why are they pre recording it though? It seems like they take away the sting when you think about the whole, like, you know, um, social media game right now. It's, we, we, there are things that we're just going to know, and then you don't put it on for like a week. I mean, you think that's like a good idea? I, I I just think I don't think that's a good idea. As far I think they should stop pre-recording and just give it live because the edits look bad. Yeah, I can't wait to see it, but I can imagine. <laughs> I'm, talking about, no, I'm talking about the past few years. I, I ain't, I'm not even talking about this last one. I'm just talking about in general. It's been pre-recorded. That's what I'm saying. Have you got a chance to catch? I mean, just even like last year or the year before. Ever since, <coughs> I don't know if it's ever been live. Well, ever since the fights broke out and all the crazy stuff and the people was cussing on live TV, it's been recorded, so. I mean, that's what you, that's what happens when you have a live show. You don't say no when people cuss on the BET Awards. Yeah, and they try to hit the hit the drop button on that, too, as best as they can. But they try. They, they try. But. They try. <laughs> well, this year's the Cypher wasn't even that good because the rapping on the Cypher was just, it, it was it was cool, but there was nothing that gave you excitement. The biggest buzz they had was about Vic Mensa mentioning XXX Extension. You know, when he said your favorite rapper um, beats up on women and people were mad about that, you know, because his XX Extension mother was in the audience. And Vic had apologized for the fact that he didn't know that the mother was in the audience because the ciphers are done weeks before the actual show. But he didn't care. You know, he stood by his ground about caring about, you know, saying what he had to say, you know, when it comes to that. But people were calling him a hypocrite because he's admitted to putting hands on a young lady before, mm-hmm. on record, and in an interview before. But I guess my point is, if you're someone who's done it, can you speak about it as a, a learning experience? Are you not allowed to speak on it because of what you got caught up in in your past? You can speak on it as a learning experience, of course. I mean, everything should be a learning experience. I mean, I don't... If you've done it, I mean, you can't look down on nobody or call nobody out because they did it. I mean, you, if you unless you saw it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. I didn't really think the bar was that bad, but apparently people were on Twitter saying that BET edited it out because what he said on Cypher Frost what premiered on TV versus the hype that people were talking about that how he's, I guess, how he said something. It was like, that's it? Yeah, yeah. So when I finally heard it, he was just like, your favorite rapper beats up on women. And I was just like, okay, but apparently they said it was edited, so... 
I'm just not of the belief that just because you made a mistake in the past, you can't criticize someone else's mistake. Now, I understand about criticizing someone who's a lot, who's 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 dead. Who's made the same mistake? <laughs> yeah, you, is or, what I'm saying. or the fact that you're speaking on the dead. You know, speaking on dead is never. It's yeah, never you kind of let that one go. Yeah. Chalk that one up, brother. Yeah, yeah. You might want to chalk that up. You know what I'm saying? But the whole award show um, was what it was. But having Lil Wayne accept the I Am Hip Hop Award, now that was pretty dope. Because I started to have, when they were running through Lil Wayne's career, I felt the respect that I have for Wayne kind of come back. And mm -hmm. Wayne's speech was pretty on point because he was talking about this award goes out to the people who refuse to let me fail, talking about his family and things of that nature. And you forget, like, the era that Wayne has lived through you know, really, 9-9-2000, when you think about it, he's literally been a student of the game, and he's only 35 years old. And mm -hmm. it really made me appreciate Wayne, just like the fact that he's so dedicated to lyricism and being great. All the things I kind of hated him for when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> you love his form now. Yeah, I, you know, because when you think about they how They hate they, you, then they love you, then they hate you again. Yeah, I'm, listen, I have to admit that. I mean, because you take an artist nowadays, they kind of just wake up and kind of just, like, roll out the bed, and they just don't even care about lyricism, or they don't even care. Wayne still cares. And let's be honest, Wayne don't have to care. You know, he's Wayne. His legacy is already sealed. He don't he's have to care. he got 50 million. Yeah, but <laughs> Wayne still cares about giving you a, a good product. Is it time we start saying Wayne is, like, a top five? Is it time we start having that argument? I mean, Ben had that argument. That he can be a top five? He can be considered, like, a top five there alive? Yeah, I thought that argument has already been made. Really? So who would you say that he's better in that they're already saying, like, in your top five? Like, in a top five, who would you say that he's already... Or in the top five that you heard mentioned. Uh, Not because you know there's Kuji your top. Kuji Rap gets mentioned in the top five? Sometimes. Eh, eh, okay, so you think he's better than Kuji Rap? Who else? Maybe Scarface. No. <laughs> but I don't, but no. Well, I don't want to touch that one. Let's, 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 who else? He got more hits. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and me and you have a talked, lot more work. You and out. I have talked about a lot more albums out. Yeah, and we don't we don't like to say just because people got hit records that that makes them less than an MC than someone who doesn't have hit records and vice no, versa. But he has more work out there. He does more consistent work. More I quality work. I definitely think work. Wayne takes more risk as an artist. Yeah, like we don't know what he, Wayne's going to do when he comes album. out. Wayne made a rock and roll album. Yeah, we don't we don't really know what he's going to do. Yeah, give me one more person you think Wayne is better in that that is mentioned in the top five argument. Someone who is mentioned in a top five argument. Eminem. Eminem was mentioned in the top five argument? Yes, they mentioned Eminem in there. They, they try to slide him in there. Okay. And you think Wayne is better than him? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a healthy... I, I, he, he, might, he, might have, he might have been. I mean, he's not going in the holy grail of the, the Jay-Z, Biggie, Tupac. What about Rakim? That, um, that, 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 that top three is kind of... Well, you know, it's, it's uh, yeah. And then you that's got true. Nas coming in at number four, and then that five spot is just like the free for all. The five is like, yeah, that's true, that's true. Because I'm, I'm pretty. Because my top five has always been pretty like, oh, it, it, I can name the four easy. It's like Big Pac, Jay Nas, and it's like my fifth. I'm always like, I, 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 I kind of stutter step because I have a tendency to be objective, and I'm like, well, there's a top five, and then there's my top five. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that you write that fifth slot, I'm always kind of like, shh. Like, you're right, it can kind of, anyone can fit in. So you're right, he's not going to be that four. But I think it is time to start, if you haven't, it's time to start saying Wayne might be better than your favorite. Somebody in your top five, Why, Wayne might be better than. You might want to honestly think, consider that. That's just what it is. I mean, the BET Hip Hop Awards, was, they suck, but Wayne getting that award, it's on point. The I Am Hip Hop? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's definitely well-deserved. It would have been, you know, better if some hip hop rappers, or I mean, I mean sorry, some, some people in hip hop would have showed up. Because I just feel like Wayne received his award in front of a bunch of people who are just famous on the internet. Mm. A bunch of one-hit wonders. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would have been nice to see him accept that award amongst his peers. Um, Bun B and DJ Khaled did the presentation, but past that in the audience, I didn't really see too many people. You know? So, that's all, though. You know, but Wayne definitely is unquestionably a legend and a GOAT. All right, let's talk about some new music then, shall we? All right, Future and Juice World, World on Drugs. Mm. I didn't see that coming. Me either. Like, I didn't see Future <laughs> even. I didn't think Future knew who he was. I mean, when you have someone who's been around, Future been around for a second now, who teamed up with someone who just came out, is that something we was looking for? I mean, it's staying woke, hip-hop-wise, trying to stay up on the Joneses. You're supposed to be always be the first to embrace it then. Yeah. 
I just rather, want my I want my collabs to kind of be genuine, I, and I wanted to be something we were like looking for. Like people were asking about Future and Drake. You know, they were they were really legit. Got to a point they were asking for it. You know, that's that's how I want my collabos. You want to be a big build up. Yeah, because otherwise it's kind of like, all right. Well, this is the age where people are just throwing out music because of the streaming, and then they, they promote it after it's already out. It's kind of the after the fact instead of the promotion before the fact. Yeah, and sometimes they don't, it's, it's not even like they really were working together. They were they, they had songs that they did, but it didn't mean they went in there to actually make an album together. Yeah, they just spent the, they just linked up. Oh, you on Miami? I'm Miami. Man, let's hit the studio. Oh, we got like four or five records done. Do like two more and just throw it out there. Right. See what happens. Let's actually do two more. Yeah, that's real. That's real. Yeah, and they get seven records, seven, eight records together. All right, boom. Let's throw that out there. See how see how I do. Yeah, I guess, man. Let's get some show money off of it. <laughs> right, right, right. Next time you in Miami. Yeah, they 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 making they putting out albums to go on tour. Putting out albums to get booked yeah. for shows. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. That's that's the game. The money's on the road. The money's not in the music. The money's on the road. No, it's not in the music Performing at all. Performing the music. That's where the money is at. Yeah, that's true. So they putting out the music to have more more material to perform at their shows. So we becoming a show industry. Of course. Yeah. Cause that's the only place the artist is really making their money. Unless you're Drake, Jay Z, Beyonce. Mama there, P there. Yeah, you or Cardi B now, or Nicki. I mean, you might as well. You better get your butt on that road. Yeah. And otherwise, I mean, sheesh. I don't know what to say to you, partner. No. You still living at home. <laughs> no. All right, but also, Khalid, Sun City. You is mean Khalid? Out. Oh. I'm Khalid? <laughs> Khalid. It's Khalid. It's Khalid. It's Khalid? It's Khalid. It's Khalid. It's Khalid. It's not Khalid. I thought it was Khalid. No, that's DJ Khalid. It's Khalid. I thought his name was Khalid. No, it's Khalid. Khalid. Really? Yes, it's Khalid. I thought it was Khaled, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Messing me up, making me think I don't know what I'm talking about. I know what I know. I, I may know not Khaled, man. I may not have a have a IQ of a thousand, but I mean I know what I know. I don't know what the levels of IQ is supposed I to be. I don't even either, <laughs> but I know what I know. I know I, I don't know that. It's very but apparent we're not I know ranking his name that high over here in this show. All right, his uh, his his, uh, his um project is out. So go check it out along with Lil Yachty. Uh shout out to the whole QC. They're they dropping, are, right? They are killing the fourth quarter right now. And that's what that was P's um um that was his post too. He said control the fourth quarter and he is trying to take it over. Cause who's came out so far? Uh you had Quavo, Baby, and now you got Yachty. No, it was it was it was Baby and such and such first, then Quavo, now Yachty. Now um Yachty, yeah. Yeah, little Yachty. Okay. Yeah. Or no, Lil Uzi Vert, right? It's not Lil Yachty. Lil Uzi Vert. Yachty came out in the summer. So Lil Uzi Vert right now. And yeah, yeah, it's Lil Uzi Vert, nothing to prove. That's, they are controlling the fourth quarter. That's, that's, that's the play. They are controlling the fourth quarter then. I mean, I guess so, man. It's, it's cute. You think QC is building up to be like a? Yeah, a new no limit. You think so? Cash money, whatever you want to call it. They is running the South. With a smaller roster? Yeah, definitely you know a smaller I mean? roster than No Limit. Cash Money didn't really have a huge roster. No Limit had everybody on. I thought, well, look, I'm sorry, I, I guess I was wrong. I, I was just double checking. Lil Yachty, what was the album that he did? He just dropped like early this summer, though. So he's he's had like two albums in, right? Yeah, so they just throw it out there. Wow, I you know I thought I wrote that wrong. Lil so that, Baby already got three. Wow, I didn't think about that. And he man. about to he working on the next one. Okay, and it. Okay, I, I guess they are doing it. And you got Gunna. I guess they are. Yeah, you got Gunna too. I forgot Gunna just came out like three, four weeks ago. But I ago. feel like people don't know labels no more. Like they don't. Like I think like some ins, some of us purists we know. Oh, they know QC. They they know like the way like the way we knew Cash Money. Like they the know, way we they knew know No QC. Limit. And they got they got City Girls too. QC got the City Girls. Well, Same. City Girl one is in jail. Oh well, they still got their albums out as well. So yes. QC is murdering it right now. Okay. I didn't know they had um, um City Girls, though. Yeah, City Girls is definitely on QC. I ain't going to I like City Girls, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like City Girls. It's like Trina is. Times, too. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. That's the new music. <laughs> Did you get a chance? Well, no, la- last week, last week, you and I were recording, unfortunately, while the shop had premiered. And Drake finally kind of verbally broke his silence about the whole Pusha T, push T situation. Did you get a chance to see any clips of that or whatever? Yeah, I did catch those clips. And he was um, mumbling, stuttering, just looked a little frail. Let's break this apart a little bit. 
first of all, the shop, we had our criticism about the show. Well, I, I know I have. I own it. I don't like the fact that they sit up in there drinking wine because I've I never been to a barbershop where someone was drinking wine out of a wine glass and having such a... Well, that's, a that's a millionaire's barbershop. Yeah, I don't know what kind of shop they were at. But um, So Drake shows up. He, 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 you know, he talks up a lot of things. And Drake is the a great artist when it comes to, when he talks, saying a lot of nothing. Um, but he he gave us some details because he talked about pretty much how him and Ye were cool. He goes out to my he goes out to Wyoming. He's working on some cuts or whatever. He's even helped writing with some songs or whatever. And he gives Kanye the information about his son and everything that he's been going through or whatever. And then he sees that Kanye is dropping dates about album releases around the time where he said he was dropping his date. And then he comes out with an album, which was Pusha T's album, but he doesn't mention it by name. And there's a song on there produced by Kanye, This and Me. So with that being said, when it he feels like Kanye is responsible, even though remember when Kanye had the whole video situation where he was like, I already told you I didn't tell Pusha T none of that? Yeah. Drake feels that's some BS, and he's responsible because he showed him your kid, he told him all this information, and then somehow this guy got it. Do you think that's Drake's fault? Or is that, is that, I mean, let's say that's true. You think that's Kanye's fault? Because if you already had this uneasy relationship with this guy and and you already kind of been on terms that are questionable, is that your fault? You came in delivering all that information? Or were you, yeah, was Drake Kanye said he was trying to open up. He was trying to give people a chance. And then he went back into his cocoon. So you going to go ahead and tell him something that you've been dealing with? That's, that's that extremely personal? That's what you're going to volunteer? Yeah, I mean, hey. He was being light skinned, opened up, yeah. had yeah. a moment. Yeah, that's that's one thing about it. I mean, he also was upset that the whole this song was about. Again, he doesn't mention Push by name, but we know who he's talking about. You know that the the first diss song was about his writing, even though he was helping Kanye for writing. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, we don't hold Kanye lyrically to the same standard that we were holding Drake. I think this goes to show when I look deeper in the situation. That Drake was more, even though he won the battle with him and Meek, he left that battle with a scar. Because this whole not writing situation still gets to him. It's lingering. Yeah, like, he gets past a lot of things publicly, but it seems like this non, this whole questioning his pen situation really bothers him. And it's almost like, yeah, you get into a fight with someone, and you go toe-to-toe, -to -toe and you lost. But let's say, like, you punched him in the eye real good time, so... You might come on, you might, you lost, but you ain't leaving no scars. You ain't leaving no swollen face. I won, but I look like I lost. Like, it's starting <laughs> to look like that with Drake right now because his eye is looking real swollen because anytime you mention the whole he didn't write anything, he gets he feels a little antsy about it. Yeah, but he said he actually did respond to um, Push, and he made the record. He just never put it out because he said some horrible things, he said. Well, yeah, I was, I was going to touch on that. I was going to touch on the fact that he was ready to go, apparently, right? He was ready to go. He, well, he made the record. The record is recorded. The record is there, and I hope it. somebody finds it, steals it, iCloud goes crazy or something. I don't know. Well, did you find it? Did you did you see that, that episode? No, so, I just saw I saw clips of it. I okay, mean, so there's a part where he's talking about how the person he didn't want to disappoint was LeBron, which yeah. I thought that was funny. Yeah. And he also was upset that, yeah, you dissed me, and you could talk about my kid, you know, whatever, and my parents, whatever. You don't know me. And then he was like, but when you talk about my friend who is dying, someone's going to punch you in the mouth. I'm like, so your friend who has an illness takes more importance over your child? <laughs> like, I'm like sitting there like, wait, you would think that the child situation is supposed to be the one to make you want to punch somebody in the mouth. Mm -hmm. And how you feel about him coming in talking about there are rules in this? You think he's right about there being rules? You think Drake has a right to kind of come in and say there are rules or there should be rules in this game? No, I ain't no rules in the battle. Jay-Z said he... uh Left condoms on his on Nas's baby mama's back seat. Yeah, but he <laughs> in, the in the baby seat, he said. He apologized for that though. But he still said it. Still said it. That's true. He still said it. He still was ready to go. Yeah. Still was ready to go. TTG. Well, the part that I think that's some BS is that with Drake is that he's, you know, had songs that people he definitely alluded to sleeping with a lot of dudes' girls. Yeah. He talked about Kid Cuddy's mental illness. Like on the record. And in the age where we're supposed to be encouraging and uplifting people about mental and making people aware about mental health, especially in the black community, you dog someone who was dealing with mental health issues. So how is that any better?
as far as what you feel like as far as their rules. Like, how was that? And why is no one pointing that out? That's why I didn't like about the shop. Because you had LeBron and Maverick just sitting there kind of just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, this is why you need like a real journalist or someone who's used to hosting an interview with someone in there. And this is why it's not good for celebrities to be interviewing celebrities because they, they cater to each other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, no one's going to challenge another person and be like, well, how about that time when you said this? How about the time when you did that? They're just going to allow you to sit there and talk what you talk with the fluorescent light in the background making you look all glowy. <laughs> the fluorescent <laughs> light background in the <laughs> I'm serious, bro. It's like, I don't understand this. Le- like, I get it. You're expressing yourself and you're upset about the situation. But it sounds like a person who just couldn't take an L. It sounds like someone who underestimated Pusha T because you are Drake. You are the star. You've been banging for a long time. I mean, Drake is going on a run, probably the longest run we've ever seen and in the culture. And you pretty much thought that, you know, the Pusha T situation wasn't going to matter. You didn't know that he had that much information about him. And... I don't think we get no benefit from you talking about the arsenal you was about to pull. Like, you sit back in your corner and I dog you, I beat you up, and you like, but you know what? I was really going to whoop J-Hall's ass. I if, had something for him. But what, what if it leaks? What you mean? What if the record leaks? What if we find the record? I mean, you DJ Academics, you tell me. The scholar? You what, got something? What if we find the record? You got something? No, I don't have nothing. But <laughs> Oh, but... It, if it, I did, I'd have sold I was about it. to say, if you did, would you say... <laughs> So to the highest bidder, who wants it? <laughs> you wouldn't play it? Oh, yeah, I'm going to play it. I'm definitely going to play it. But you're going to try to sell it first? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you think there's a point to that as far as him and the way he dictates that? You think there's some fairness to that and what he's talking about as far as Drake is concerned? Uh, you think we should just leave kids up out of it? I mean, it is what it is. Once he go low, you got to go lower. It's like limbo. I mean, Pac said, my fofo make sure none of y'all kids grow. Yeah. <clears throat> and that wasn't even a bar. That was just him yelling. Yeah, that was him talking at the end of the song. I didn't even know Prodigy had Sick of Cell into Tupac. Yeah. Definitely. And he said he, his wife. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how you can come in. I don't know, man. I just don't like a lot of the contradiction in the game about how we there are certain rules for certain things, but certain rules for nothing else, and how no one's calling no one out on this. You understand? Like you, you took the L, homie. Just, just take the L gracefully and just keep it moving. You know what I mean? It's totally fine. Then you waited four months to have this conversation, and it's like if you're gonna give us this conversation, give it to us as raw as you can. You know what I mean? This whole you and I have talked about this before, but I don't care. This whole like not mentioning someone's name when we all know who you're talking about is so annoying. Yeah. Push T actually commented on one of the clips on um. Instagram, he said was smiling faces. He was just laughing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just ain't for it. And I don't think we should be changing the rules because a Canadian rapper wants to come in and say that he don't, you know, things ain't things ain't fair for him. Mm-hmm. And I think Drake's a dope artist. But these are the things that he does that makes people kind of like, uh, it's a little bit on that borderline of ish. I just, I, I don't really, I don't, I'm not a fan of it personally. So. Yeah, so in response to that, I don't know if you got a chance to catch this, but Pusha T responded to the response. He guest star, you know, there's no secret on the Joe Budden podcast. Yeah, I saw that too. He had a lot to say. He had a lot mm-hmm. to say. Um, one of the things that he pointed out was that the news that he got about Drake's child did not come from Kanye. He wanted to make that clear that it came from Forty. I mean, he got who is um, Drake's gotta, right hand man. Got to protect his job. I mean, he is the president of Good Music. He want the checks to keep coming. He said it came from Drake's right hand man, Forty who's Drake's producer friend that Pusha talked about having MS. And he claims it comes from 40 because 40 was sleeping with a woman and pretty much it was pillow talk. Oh, okay. And in that pillow talk, he revealed all these things. And Pusha is like, well, obviously the woman doesn't care about him as much as he cares about her, but that's how he says he got the information. So it didn't come from Kanye. Mm. Now, you can easily say this is a lie, but there's a lot of dudes I know who got caught up on pillow talk. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of dudes I know got caught for filler talk. I got a lot of homeboys that didn't got me in trouble because I told them something thinking that it's between us and I show up and they girl slash wife. It's like, yeah, Jay, so I heard about them. I'm like, what the, what is this? Yeah, she don't like, girlfriend don't like you no more. Can you look at your man the same? If that's true, if you Drake and you found out that that's how I got out, that 40 was, yet that your man, you know, was getting that in pillow talk, could you forgive your man? Like, come on, bro. Come on, bruh. Now you got to be at arm's reach now. 
It had to be him. Do you go back and confront your man? Like, do you think that's true? If your if your adversary is saying that's where he got the information from, do, does Drake go, go and confront? Yeah, you gotta ask Jordan. the question. You gotta ask the question. You gotta ask the question. Yeah. I got. Know. I got. I need to hear it. I need to hear it. I need to hear. I need to hear you say it. <laughs> yeah. Because then I can hold you accountable for what you're saying. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. I wonder if a lot of other MCs or rappers have got caught up in pillow talk. And that's how a lot of these things get out. Of course, all of them do. I'm trying to think, like, who's somebody we can think about that probably got caught up in some stuff like this? I don't know. It'll probably come to me. But I feel like we've seen this story before, but it's just I just can't remember if there's been people who've gotten caught up in pillow talk or there was a – there's always things that involve a woman. It's, re, it's very rare that rappers get into a beef in a situation and there's not a woman involved. But here's what I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear the whole thing that women gossip more than men because all this is very gossipy. Mm. Like, this is extremely gossipy, this whole situation. He told you that, you told him this, and all the, everyone's supposed to be gangster, but yet we're all gossiping about news that wasn't someone else supposed to know. Like, you know, period. And I find it funny how neither one of them want to give each other props because Drake was like, yeah, you know, it was genius how they rolled it out, but the song was trash. And mm-hmm. Push is like, yeah, you know, Scorpion was whack. It had a couple songs on there. It's like neither one of them wants to give each other credit. Of course, you can't do that. At all? No, oh, oh, you can't big up his album. No, of course you got to trash his album. Yeah, that's real. Another thing that was interesting about that whole conversation that Pusha kind of brought out was the fact that Ye and Drake definitely have like a bromance going on, and he can't be neutral. You know, he made the argument that he's not built like the way a lot of them are built. Matter of fact, I'm just going to play it because I had this up on, on the page. Be in the studio when Drake's there. I can't. I'm not allowed. When, listen, listen, when, listen, when they go to Wyoming, I'm there from the 1st to the 7th. All right, all right, uh, all right, I'll I catch you, I'm going to catch you, da, da, da. Next thing I hear, on the 8th, boom. <laughs> Drake here, and he there for da, 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 these many days. I don't know this. He's I'm angry. not allowed. Everybody else can be there. I can't. He wants to Because I don't play neutral. I don't do that. You don't get to shoot my homeboys and so on and so forth. It's not happening. It's just I, not what I do. I, but I feel like Kanye should be taking that same stance. But he don't do that. Like, everybody not built like me, bro. Everybody not built like me. Understand and you me. can't make people be built like you. That's a fact. You can't make people. You 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 can't. That's a fact. And I don't charge. And this is the music industry. This ain't the street. Right. So I don't I don't carry people like that. Right. I don't. It's like, it is what it is. Woo! Woo! What that sound like to you? Sound like he wish you, he wanted some smoke. <laughs> is that some truth in that? So he wish he was there. Is that some truth in that? If your man is is cool with somebody that you ain't cool with, it, do you leave that be or you start rocking with him? Look, he still need to keep them checks coming in. <laughs> is that what it'll come down to? It's going to come down to it. He works for Kanye at the end of the day. Yeah. It's not but, really your man. It's your boss. Yeah. He also claims that he took shots at Drake because he feels like Drake has taken shots at people next to him. So he feels like if you take shots at someone next to me, I might get hit. So I'm going. So you defending your man, but yet your man is still rocking with somebody who you going at it with. Isn't that a little bit confusing though? It's definitely confusing. Because you, you follow where I'm going with this? like Yeah, but Kanye bounces back and forth and around and around in circles forever. So that's nothing new. It's confusing, but it ain't because it's Kanye. Yeah. So if there's anybody else with Kanye, it would be very confusing. I do agree with the fact this ain't the streets. Yeah, you can't the put the streets in the industry because that's it ain't real. The streets, it ain't the streets. It's definitely not so far from it. Yeah, so I mean, I, I do agree with that. He doesn't seem phased that Drake was threatening to quote unquote, I guess, like punch him in the mouth because of the comment. So he doesn't seem like, or he says somebody's going to punch you in the mouth or whatever. He doesn't seem phased by it. I don't think he even paid that attention. He's like, oh, he. he yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't think he believes that. I feel like the common denominator in the whole situation is Kanye. Like it's like he's bigger, he's more of the issue than Drake is the issue to Pusha and Pusha's the issue to Drake. It seems like it's Kanye. His inability to be consistent or just stand strong and be like, all right, we don't we're not rocking with each other. Yeah, Kanye's just on another planet right now. Yeah. Him dealing with the situation and running off and going chilling with Donald Trump doesn't help. Yeah, don't help it at all. Just make it look even crazier. Yeah, he does. I'm not built for a lot of things. 
But if my man is rocking with somebody who I ain't rocking with, I do got to make the decision if it's not about business and what is it really, 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 really about. But it also kind of takes away from the whole aspect. Remember, a few, uh, what was that, a few months ago when Jay Prince was saying he was the reason why there was no response? Yeah, I remember that. He said he told him not. He said there would be no response. He, he deaded it, which still could be true. Well, Drake said in the shop that he felt like he, well, he said he called LeBron. So he kind of contradicts that story. You know, he felt like he didn't want to disappoint LeBron, and LeBron told him, as much as I want to see this, I'm a hip-hop historian, you can never disappoint me. So his biggest fear was disappointing LeBron. And it seemed like it was his biggest disappointment, his biggest fear was disappointing Jay Prince. So it's like those stories don't really go together. But Jay Prince also got a book out right now. Yeah, he's, he's trying to sell books. He got a book out. I mean, not no one is calling Jay Prince a liar, but obviously somebody's not checking in on the truth of this story. But Jay Prince also called, you know, Pusha T an ant. Felt like, yo, you know, Pusha T doesn't matter. They can squash him whenever they want. I mean, does, does these rules still apply? I'm, this is what I'm trying to just understand. I, I want to know where do these people step in when your man's acting wild? So everybody else can act wild except for your man. That's what I don't understand. No. Nah, the rules don't apply. No rules. I say no rules in a battle. Yeah. Go in. Go in. Where was the OG stepping in when you were acting crazy? I, that's Again, I just don't understand the selectism of this whole situation. Like, I don't get it. It's what I don't understand. It's, it's just like, it's hypocrisy, man. It's like, oh, well, you know, that's when you draw a line. But your man been wilding this whole time. But you're not going to check your man for wilding this whole time. I don't know. If Pusha T is the ant to Jay Prince, I, I guess he is, but I'm still going to read Jay Prince's book. <laughs> Respect. Right. All right, well, let's talk about some sports, all right? LeBron officially has made his Lakers debut. He debuted in a loss, but it was still entertaining. Still nice. See the Lake Show officially back. What do you think about LeBron and being a Laker? Um, I guess this weekend is 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 the time he's actually going to premiere in, in the because they play at Portland. Am I tripping? Yeah, they were in Portland. It wasn't the home opener. It was just okay. the season opener. So the home opener is the one I'm kind of looking more forward to. I guess that's the one I actually kind of like, will, will like feel it. Yeah. You speaking know? of the home opener, they said last year the average home opener sales ticket price was like 192 dollars. The year before that, it was like 170. Uh, you want to guess what it is this year? Two hundred, six hundred fifty-two dollars is the average home opener ticket price in a Staples Center. Average? That's the LeBron effect. Jeez. Of course, you got your ten thousand, your courtside seats, and your box seat, but all that, but just all that average together, six hundred fifty-two dollars. The LeBron effect. Showtime Man. is back, and Man. it will be packed. I promise you that. You think um, Lonzo Ball's father got a seat? Yeah, he got a seat. What's his name? But he's again? been terribly quiet since LeBron has. Now, I can't remember his name right now. That's what he's, I was like. He's he's been um. Lavar has been very, yeah. Lavar, Lavar, Lavar has been very very quiet. So I don't know if they had a backdoor conversation or Magic stepped in or what happened, but he's been very quiet since um Lebron's come to town. He's been real quiet. Shout out to Magic Johnson for making that chess move. Yeah, because so. he he managed to land the best player in the league. And also managed to make the biggest mouth be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, also going to football, Marshawn Lynch will miss extended period of time because of a groin injury. That I didn't groin... know Marshawn. I thought he only signed for that one year. I know he's playing again this year. Oh yeah, he's playing this year. I didn't. I, I swear I didn't know that, bro. I didn't know. I thought he only signed for one year. I haven't, you know, I've been watching the NFL. Well, well, he came back though, but he's there. But he's on. He's he messed up his groin, and you know that's like. One of the most important parts, you can't move side to side. It just it just kind of cripples you. But um, also, um, Cardinals fire their offensive coordinator and promote Byron Leftwich, you know, the famous quarterback who who limped down the field on a long drive at Marshall. Yeah, that guy. Remember him? Oh, wow. I'm, I'm thinking about it now. I'm like, oh, I had to think about what you said. Like, oh, wow. Yeah, really? they had to carry him down the field and he, as he did a two-minute drill. Yeah, that was uh, that guy. Also... My Eagles are supposed to be bringing um, LaShawn McCoy back or Le'Veon Bell. See what happens. They're going to be very aggressive at the trade deadline for playmakers, they say. When is the deadline? Week 8. Huh? Week 8. So you think are you going? You think you're going to score both or you think you're going to score one, oh, no, of, no, no, one no. of them? There's no way to score both. There's no point in scoring both. I think if we get Le'Veon, he's only good for this year because we can't afford to pay him next year. He wants eighteen million a year. We're gonna have to pay Carson Wentz in a year too, so we ain't gonna have. We can't afford Le'Veon, but Lashawn McCoy, we can get, we can bring him back, and we can be right back to where we was, Super Bowl bound. Okay, defending champs, Super Bowl 
Champs. Okay. I hear you talking. In the building. <laughs> That's the sports report. <laughs> Well, all right. Well, we got to give a big ups because news is Queen Latifah has recently got engaged to her long-term girlfriend, Miss Ebony Nichols, and they're expecting a baby. Oh. They're um, going to go pick it up? I, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, I, <laughs> I think Miss Ebony is pregnant. I mean, no. Oh, she's actually pregnant. I oh. think Miss Ebony is pregnant. Not Queen. I think Miss Ebony is actually the one who's pregnant. Queen never officially, like, Cleo. came out, right? We just I think we always just kind of rock. Yeah. Ever since Cleo, we kind of was like, all right. Ain't that crazy how we, I remember a time where no one was really like talking, it's like until Cleo. Like, Will Smith played gay in his first movie, but no one ever went back. But there's something about the win. What movie? Six Degrees of Separation. That was his first movie. He played gay in there. He was straight gay. Like, straight, he was having sex with a man in the movie. That was his first movie. Never seen that movie before. Yes, he was having sex with a man in the movie. Never heard of that movie. Six Degrees of Separation, yes, yes. Based on a true story. But Will was able to, that, that never stuck with him. But Cleo, it never left Queen. You, mm. think, you think that was just because people had already suspected it? When she was already rolling like that, like in Living Single, she was the dominant. dominant no, like, in Living Single, she was dating a man in the show, man. Stop. She was dating a man, but she, was, she wasn't gay, but she still moved the same way. I mean, you know, but she was kissing men and everything on the show. What? No, no. <laughs> what they're expecting. MC Light, we're waiting on you. She's married to a guy. MC Light, we're waiting on you. Stop. Love you. Stop. Sierra F- FSO this year. Stop. Stop. Well, you're going to see her husband. He's going to ask you about this. <laughs> she met him on a gaming site. You know, he, he's hey. he a regular guy, so he's he going to step up to you. Like, what's up? Well, I'm sure he's having a lot of fun because I'm sure she brought some home. I mean, if that's the case, then shout out to him. Shout out to him. If if, if that's the case, allegedly. MC like, keep it the way you're doing. You're a real MVP. Hey, man, you're going to go out inside. That's my first hip-hop crush, man, when I was a kid. My first hip-hop crush. I mean, don't get me wrong. No respect, disrespect the husband. She can still get it. No, I'm pretty sure she is. She's married now. I'm pretty sure there's no, there's no. Um... What's about for me? Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't disrespect the husband, but she can get it. Yeah, yeah. She's still right. Yeah, yeah. That's real. That's real. Um, also, a big ups because this past week was the anniversary of a few things. Scarface: The Diary and Murder Was the Case movie soundtrack both came out in '94, early this week. That's over, what, 24 years ago? Mm. Um, the Diary, Never Seen a Man Cry. Classic record. Diary is considered Scarface's, we were just talking about Face earlier. Never seen a man cry till I seen a man Scarface I mean, the Diary is probably considered his best work when you think about, like, Face and his whole spectrum, of, you know, that he's put out. It's yeah. considered, like, his best work. Murder Was a Case was just an ill soundtrack with a very long extended movie that was pretty much an extended video. But Murder Was The Case soundtrack itself was 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 dope. And it got me thinking, we don't have hip-hop soundtracks no more. You know, hip-hop movies. But hip-hop used to at least have soundtracks even to movies that wasn't necessarily like hip-hop. Or did we just make it hip-hop because of the soundtrack? Just made it hip-hop because of the soundtrack. I was saying, what was the last time you wanted to really mess with a soundtrack, though? I mean, set it off. That soundtrack was, was pretty much R&B, but people rock with it. No, Brown Sugar had a good one. Brown Sugar had a good one. Brown Sugar's soundtrack is probably better than the movie. Um, I actually like the movie. Man, but we talking about as far as it's been, but Brown Sugar, that came out years ago. Was the last soundtrack we really was really rocking with? Black Panther. You got me. And I think that's probably why we rock with Black Panther so much because <laughs> there hasn't been a soundtrack that we was really messing with. But we did get behind Black Panther. That's real. Which yeah. was executive produced by Kendrick Lamar. Yep, yep, yep. So we did, we did rock with Black Panther. But before then... What's one of the dopest hip-hop soundtracks you can name off the top of your head? Belly. Uh, Above the Rim. Comes to my mind. Above the Rim. Sunset Park. I say Belly. Men in Society. It ain't, yeah. Belly ain't messing with Men in Society soundtrack. Men in Society. Yeah. I mean, Above the Rim was better than Men in Society than me. As a movie or a soundtrack? Both. Really? Above know. the Rim was better than Men in Society as a movie? had Pac in it. If, they had put, if Pac would have been Old Dog, I'd say Men in Society. Pac was never supposed to play Old Dog. That's a, that's a misconception. He was supposed to play Sharif. Oh. The Muslim guy. Yeah, he was no. only, that's the big misconception. Yeah. Oh, he was supposed to have been Old Dog. No. He, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> he, I say Old Dog. He I don't care to be, what John Singleton says now, 
Pac was supposed to be an old dog. It wasn't John Singleton who did Men's Society. I mean, you know what I mean. It the was guy, the Hughes brothers. Uh, yeah, the Hughes brothers. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's but that's why, because no uh, Pac that's because Pac wanted, from my understanding, a part time he he wanted a small role in Menace because at the same time he was filming Port of Justice. So he didn't want to have a major role in Menace. That's why he wanted Sharif. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so Men's Society, dope soundtrack. Above the rim, above the rim, good soundtrack. What's another good movie soundtrack? I feel like we're forgetting. Gang related. That was it. Get it gets thrown under the movie the cup. was horrible, but <laughs> I like the movie. I thought Pac playing a cop was good. I like the movie. <laughs> the movie was horrible. Gang, but, but gang related was the soundtrack was hot though. Yeah, you know, but what's I mean? What's the soundtrack we really, 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 really think about when I, I'm? I mean, Boys in the Hood. When I got the hookup. <laughs> I got the hookup. Was a dope soundtrack. No, um, 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 I'm about it. I rock with that. that soundtrack was way better than the movie. True. <laughs> I'm about it. Give me one more. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of all the hood movies we grew up on. What's the sound? I feel like we're missing something. I really feel like we're missing something. Let me think like hip hop soundtracks. What's one that we're missing? Don't hit stop. What's, 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 what's one that we missing? They mostly all of them. I feel like we didn't, man. All these, I see this Wi-Fi all keeps popping up. State Property? Uh, was that a soundtrack? Yeah, it was a soundtrack to it. That was a soundtrack? Yeah. Juice! Paid it full. Paid full? I don't even know who was on that soundtrack. Was he really playing that soundtrack? Oh, yeah. Get Rich or Die Trying? That was the, um, the song We Are The Champions with Dame Dash talking yeah. and everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Backstage. Oh, that was backstage, the yeah. That was backstage, the yeah. I remember backstage. I went to go. I went to the movies to see that. Yeah, that was dumb. When Dame was cussing out Clue. Yep. I went to the movies to actually see and that. Kevin man. Lyles. Um, Juice. Yeah. The Eight Mile soundtrack. All right. Eight Mile soundtrack was pretty dope, man. Yeah. Um, Eight Mile soundtrack, and here's a, oh, here's one you probably didn't think about though. Oh, um, New Jack City. Uh, um, um, dog, I knew I was forgetting something. The best movie soundtrack to me, and you came in. I, I give you one try, real quick. We'll, we'll close out with this. G- g- give me one. I'm about to name you one. That's the best. I, I feel like it's the best movie soundtrack ever. But you go ahead. The Bodyguard. No. <laughs> <laughs> New Jersey Drive. New Jersey Drive. New Jersey Drive had the best soundtrack to me ever, yo. New Jersey Drive, yo. Red Man, Keith Murray, all them New Jersey Drive, man. That was one of the dopest soundtracks ever, yo. Another one was Nutty Professor One. Yeah. You had Fossey Brown, Jay Z, Ain't No. Um, and Friday soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Friday soundtrack was real dope. So, yeah, man, it was a lot of um real dope stuff. How to be a player. How high. <coughs> Excuse me. How high. You just going off movies now. Those really <coughs> have a lot of big records. How high that? Dude, you name. You talking about Def Jam, How to Be a Player, didn't have a good soundtrack? No. Yes, it had, did. Yeah, Big Mom and the big, she, the Foxy Brown record with Drew Hill. That was it. No, it was good. It was a good record, though. I'm with that. <sighs> I, you know, I, I almost forgot to say this when you were talking about the Lakers and their um, season opener when they lost to Portland. Damn they got a, Lillard went off. They got a speech from Kendrick Lamar uh, about sacrifice, preparation, and release of negativity. It was part of the... Lakers, I think, are starting a genius series where the GM is inviting successful people from the industry to talk to the team throughout the season. Now, I feel like that's good and bad. That can be, like, really good. You want to hit aspiration, but it can also be probably, like, annoying. Because like, if you just came from a loss, like, where they just came from, do you really want to hear some celebrity tell you something about, you can do it? I mean, that's kind of good for, like, high school, college. But you in the NBA, you're already successful. Yeah. So you're kind of looking at these people as your peers, not as, I mean, unless you bring in like some mega, mega, like Oprah or somebody, or I don't know, somebody, mm. they got to bring in Ray Lewis or somebody. I don't know. Like <laughs> Ray might get annoyed at these young kids nowadays because they'll be on the phone. Ray might actually like choke somebody up. <laughs> like, you know, Ray, Ray get to talking for like 30 seconds and these kids get to tweeting it. It's like, it's a little bit difficult nowadays, but I mean, I guess it's, I guess it's a good idea. You know, Kendrick, you know, had that conversation, but. I just don't know about it throughout the season. Some sad news kind of came about a little bit. You was watching Luke Cage's um, second season, right? Yeah, I haven't caught up on it, though. Um, I watched, well, like, the first episode. I haven't watched the whole thing. First two a, episodes. It's been announced it's not going to get a third season. Netflix has canceled it. Last week, you know, Netflix announced that they canceled Iron Fist after season two. 
And so the word is is that the Netflix Netflix is canceling these Marvel shows is because um they want to come out with movies. Well, not because they're going to come out with movies, it's going to be on Disney streaming service. Mm-hmm. Like right now, DC Universe and the DC side of the comic books, they have they have the they have the Titan show on just streaming. And so the word is is that a lot of these shows that Netflix is canceling is just going to move to streaming. Mm. Right, so that's why Netflix is getting rid of them. Even though Netflix is a streaming service, but Disney is going to have their own streaming service, and Disney owns Marvel. So Disney just snatched. They're just snatching all their all their stuff down, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. I mean, it's kind of like smart because it's like I give you something that's mine. I didn't really want to put the energy into blowing it up. You blow it up for me, then I take it back. Yeah, <laughs> so you do all the work, and then I just run. Or with Netflix it. is kind of like you know what you're gonna take this anyway. So you know what we ain't gonna renew. Go ahead and go. On. You know we're gonna take our toys and go home this way. But I hope so. I hope they come back. The thing is, is that those two characters can still, um, you know, kind of like live on because between them, Daredevil, which is, I think Daredevil premieres tonight too, as far as it's season three, between all of those elements, they can still show up in each other's shows. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be gone, but maybe this means they are going to take all of them. You know, maybe Disney is going to like have it where you have to stream. Sooner or later, we're all going to end up cutting the cord and we're all pretty much just going to be straight up like, you know, um, what's that, Firefox? Oh, you know, just download apps. Yeah, everything's going to be a big app. Yeah, everything's going to be a big app, man. And also, um, Hip Hop Evolution Season 2 is um, premiered on Netflix also, too. I don't know if you got a chance to see Season 1. It was a really good breakdown. That that took that was like two years ago. So you can definitely tell they take their time into this because it probably takes them a while to get all the interviews and they go through the different stages and everything. They talk about gangster rap and different evolutions of hip-hop. So if you're a hip-hop historian or you just want to get some, either want to reminisce or you want to learn more about the culture, it's a it's a good show to watch. It's what I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm shouting y'all for It's a good show to watch. So you should check that out, man. But I hate that Luke Cage is going. It ended, it ended kind of like on a cliffhanger, too. So I hate when they do that with shows. They end up on a cliffhanger and it's like, Dang. ah, right, right, right. We'll never know. Did you get a chance to check out your boy um, last episode of Walking Dead? Yeah, of course. come on now. Okay, of course, of course. So how'd you how'd you feel about it? You you think it's gonna be a civil war or what? I don't know, but it's it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good though. It's gonna be very good, very good. You agree with them on the fact that they feel like they shouldn't give no money or no resources to the other um you know the saviors where they used to live? I mean, if they took them over. You gotta feed them. People are resource. You don't want to feed them at all. Though. They're like, no, nah, f them. They should live on. Them. <laughs> they like f them. Yeah, they, they got they got to feed them. They got to feed him. Somebody going to kill Rick that's going to be his friend, homie. That's how I'm predicting it. Somebody going to kill Rick. Rick is on his way out, out of here. He's going to get killed from a friend. I think that's how the series is going to end. That ain't how the book is, but I think the series is leading towards. Because everybody mad at Rick except for, except for um, Michonne. Except for Michonne. Yeah, er- everybody else is mad at Rick. Because he hitting her. <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Right, but everybody else, they had it with Rick. They like, this kumbaya issue you talking about. And I kind of read that before and other things. It's like the people that get you there, they don't want them to stay there. It's like you think about like even, even, even in the Bible, like Moses got them there, but he couldn't he couldn't keep going with them. It's like that's how it is with Rick. It's like he got them to this point, but yeah, Rick, but we don't, we don't want you, bro. Mm. We don't want you. So Rick, Rick, I think Rick going to end up getting killed by like a homeboy, man. He's going to end up getting stabbed in the back, something like that. that that's just how I'm predicting. So. All right, well, my man Rick, that's all good. We yeah. gonna see. We gonna see. We gonna see. We gonna see. But that, that about does it, man. We gonna get up out of here. What you got going on for the weekend? Um, looking forward to watching this special. I forgot the name of it. It's TV One. Tashina Arnold. She's talking about she gonna let loose uncensored. Tashina Arnold. Pam. Okay. She's gonna be talking about the whole Martin situation and how she felt oh, about that. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Did they give any kind? I haven't seen it, any preview or any clip of anything she gonna really dig, dig into that stuck with you. Yeah, she was she was um talking about how she was like it was like a train. It was like a watching Martin and to and Gina go at it was like watching a car car about to crash and you couldn't stop it. Mm. It's like the show business got him, so I can't wait to watch that this Sunday at 10 p.m. Okay, all right. Well, you know, let me. I'm gonna probably catch that with you too, man. I got a whole bunch of shows I got to catch up on. I'm, you know, I got that. Also, make sure you check out the latest on Walks and Choose Bubblegum dot com. You know, what I mean, I wrote a piece on there called "Dear Embarrassed Black Friend." So make sure you check that out. You know how we've been feeling lately. So you know, check that out. Walks and Choose Bubblegum dot com. One word. Also, it's getting ready to go down next weekend, man. H U, you know. That's right. H U Homecoming, Amber. baby. 
no, Howard University homecoming is in effect. Bow down to greatness, baby, as we step foot here. I'm, 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 I'm about to go all in. After Tuesday, don't holler at me. I'm not the same person. I'm not going to be the same person to say it right now. You got me up into Tuesday. We can do business up into Tuesday. But after Tuesday, this is it's, it's a wrap Jones for me, baby. I'm up out, out of here. I'm up out of here. Uh, make sure you hit us up on all our platforms, SoundCloud, Podomatic, iTunes. Go to the search engine. Type in Hip Hop Matrix Show, one word. YouTube also. Make sure you like us, subscribe on iTunes. Please, please, make sure you rate us. Tell them how much you think we're dope. We're a dope show. We appreciate all the feedback that you've been giving to us, okay? Hit me up on my Twitter, at JHar Radio. This guy right here, at DJ Academics, at WHMS98. As usual, be blessed and successful, and we will talk to you soon. We ghosts. It's the Hip Hop Matrix Show.